All right, in the last video, we made some very basic movement that we're gonna completely override today. So let's really talk about why we're gonna override it and what we're trying to go for. So in like a game like Asteroid, you kind of have ships coming down at you and you're going upwards and then you just shoot at them. And that's all there's to it. But this game is gonna be a little bit more top down and we're gonna actually have it so the ship is facing wherever the mouse is pointing as if the mouse is a aim cursor of some sort, as if it's, you know, where we're aiming at. I might even change the cursor so that it looks like some kind of targeting system, but I digress. Um, and so we're going to want it so that it, the ship turns towards it, and it's important to know right off the bat what you're manipulating in order for that to happen. So if you go onto the player, you look underneath no 2D, you'll see that we can rotate things around like so to create different rotations. So right away you can kind of see what we want to manipulate in order to make it face a certain direction. We basically just want this to turn to the location towards our mouse cursor, right? If you hit this little squiggly turning arrows, by the way, it'll go back to its default setting. Now we know kind of what we want to do. We want to make our ship rotate towards our mouse to face our mouse. So if we hit the screen, the script again right there. I'm gonna hit those four arrows to kind of maximize this. And once again, we're gonna work on this. I'm gonna make a variable that's gonna hold this information inside of it. Uh, we're gonna call it dir for direction. I'm gonna set it equivalent to git. And here's the beauty of Godot and its auto finishing uh, system. If we just write in mouse, it'll actually just pull up a couple things. You see git global mouse position, git local mouse position. We wanna get global mouse position, which is, uh, you don't need no difference right now. And that right there will return a vector too. Now, if you don't know what that means, you can literally go to the search help or hit F4 as we talked about before. You can write git global, and all of a sudden you'll see mouse position right there and it'll pull it up. It'll say it returns a vector two and gets the global position of the mouse, right? It tells you right inside of the help that's already built into this. I go back to the player.gd, we have that in there. So what this is gonna do is gonna set the direction equivalent to wherever my mouse is at. Now the thing is, we don't actually want it to be equivalent to that. What we actually want it to be equivalent to is the difference between that location and the current location of our player, because that will give us, give us the distance to the player using a vector two, right? I know that might be confusing for you right now, but I'll explain it a little bit better here in a second. So in order to do that, we can just say dir minus equals position. So what this will give us back in return, imagine, you know, we have the enemy right here and we're subtracting our location right here from that. So what you get is the difference, the line between those two points on there. And so if I add the, this dir, this variable onto our current position, we'll end up at the mouse location, right? Therefore giving us the distance between those two things, or <laughs> which is an even better use of this, if you shrink that down to the smallest possible unit, to the unit of one, to the magnitude of one, you'll actually end up with this right here. You call it dir.normalize. And what normalize does is it puts it to the magnitude of one, right? So say for instance that the vector, the distance was 75 units of X and 25 units of Y to get us to the, uh, to the mouse position. If we added 75 to our X and 25 to our Y, we would end up from where we're at to where the mouse location is at. So what this will do is it will add up both those numbers. Dot normalize actually adds both those numbers together, or it doesn't actually do this. It just sets it to the magnitude of one, which mathematically basically adds those numbers together. Then it goes 70, X is actually gonna be equivalent to 75 over those numbers put together, 100, which is gonna be equivalent to 0.75 and y is going to be equivalent to 25 over 100, which is equivalent to 0.25, which both these numbers equal 1, right? That's what uh, dot normalize does. It sets it to the magnitude of 1 so that it's, well, to the magnitude of 1. It sets it to the smallest possible unit, and then you can multiply that. So it basically gives you a direction inside of there, right? So you can think of it, if you didn't understand that, that's okay. But you can think of this as dir, when you say dir dot normalize, you're set you're turning a distance into a direction. You can think of it like that as well. I was trying to give you guys a more thorough approach to that, but maybe that was the best wasn't the best idea. 
Now this is a really long way of programming this, so instead of that, dir minus position, we'll put it all in quotes like so, and we'll write dot normalized like that, and then we can just erase this down here and kind of shorten that up because it's exactly the same thing, just all in one line. And we can even shorten it up further by going bar dir and then going git global mouse position like that, and that will shorten up another step right there. So get the normal global mouse position, it'll subtract our position, and it'll dot normalize that to give us a direction altogether. So I was kind of trying to show you guys all the steps that went along with that, but that is how you make it happen all in one line right there, which is a little bit cleaner. So now there's a built-in variable called rotation that is what I was showing you guys earlier when I was manipulating things and making the ship turn towards something. And if we set that equivalent to dir.angle, which will translate that from a vector 2 to an actual angle, which is what we want. So if I hit this play button now, you'll see our ship is actually turning with our mouse. But unfortunately, the top of the ship is not facing it. It's actually the right of our ship that's facing it. And the reason why that is, is that the game engine automatically assumes that the right of your ship is actually the front, right? And it does this because platformer games are really common and they're all built for platformer games, basically. So most game engines actually assume this. So if you go back to the 2D view real quick and get it off those four arrows, we can actually just go down to the art on here by clicking, left clicking the art. And then you can just rotate this by clicking on that zero right there, writing in 90 and then it will automatically turn it to the right. And of course you can remember a right angle is 90 degrees, and then you go 180 to turn it all the way around, and 270 to turn it to the face of the left, and 360 to go all the way in a circle. Now I hit play. Our ship now faces the mouse cursor, which is exactly what we want. Now, taking this a step further though, up isn't always gonna be going upwards anymore. If I hit play again, and then I'm pushing W, and I'm going up in that direction, right? And I'm still going upwards. Our camera is moving along with the ship, so it's no longer looking like it, because I'm still holding my W down. But I'm still moving in that direction right now, right? And the reason why I'm moving in that direction, but I'm facing other directions, because we're always moving in the upwards direction, because of the way that we program this, to always move us negative 50, which is, by the way, negative numbers are upwards in the Y, and positive numbers are downwards in the Y axis. So we want to pass in a different vector too. And if you remember right, this dir right here is actually a vector two. We made it, and it's the smallest possible vector two that we can get that goes towards our mouse. So if we take dir, then we want to multiply it by a new variable called speed, and we can make the speed up here, bar speed, and we'll set it equivalent to 50 so that we move at the same pace. Multiply this by speed. Then we're going to hit the play button again, and then you'll see that wherever I'm, my mouse is facing, my ship now moves towards it because of how we did this. If I didn't multiply this by speed, it would be moving at such a slow pace, you'd barely be able to see it probably, right? So you can kind of see it moving, maybe not in the video, I can kind of see it on the screen, but it's moving at such a minuscule pace, which is why we multiply it by speed. And that about does it for our basic movement system inside of here. Um, I basically all we did inside of here is we applied a lot of the knowledge that we had in the previous videos. We made a couple variables and we applied them onto here. We can always just change this number now and have it have access to it in speed. We're going to make the system work a little bit better here in future videos because um, we don't want it to. We don't want the ship to just automatically stop moving. Uh, just uh, stop moving as soon as we stop holding W. It's basically going from full speed to no speed at that point, right? And we also want to be able to shoot stuff here pretty soon. So we're going to work on that here pretty soon. Anyways, I hope that you really enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, please leave me a like, a subscribe, a comment down below. And, well, yeah, let me know what you guys like, what you dislike. Let me know if the series is working for you because I don't know. I have no idea. Just doing what I can. Anyways, have a great day, guys. Bye.